Today on Rift Spirits and Gear, we check out the all new React IR Impulse Response Loader and Attenuator from St. Rock. I've been a long time user of impulse responses for my guitar tones, whether that is in the form of a digital plugin or outboard hardware like Universal Audio Aux and the two note stuff, the Torpedo series of impulse loaders. Well, the new kid on the block is the React IR from St. Rock. Now this thing has several little magic tricks and some things under the hood that kind of set this apart from the other hardware impulse loaders on the market. Now, if your first reaction upon seeing the React IR is, oh, it kind of reminds me of a Two Notes Torpedo Live, for example, you wouldn't exactly be wrong. I mean, the form factor is a single rack unit. However, it does some things a little differently. It comes at the impulse response thing a little differently. And also, this thing is 600 bucks. That's $200 cheaper than the next hardware impulse loader and attenuator. That's pretty sick. Features that set the React IR apart from other attenuator and impulse loader units is the fact that it uses a true load box with low frequency resonance and high frequency response. And you can control these via the two switches right on the front of the React IR. Now on the front panel, you will see features like a headphone output with an auxiliary in so you can jam along to some tracks while listening to your affected guitar tone using a real tube amplifier. I thought this particular feature was super, super cool. On the back, you will see various controls for balanced out, DI out, SBDIF out, MIDI in, USB control for the app, which we will get to in a second, along with the attenuation to the cab, an insert, ground in, ground out, et cetera, et cetera. It's all there. Now, some of the bells and whistles I was talking about underneath the hood of the React IR are the ability to load and mix up to eight individual impulse responses and then render those out with the included effects in the unit, which is like noise gate, EQ, low pass filter, high pass filter, et cetera, et cetera. You can make all that stuff and boil it all down to a single impulse and then burn it on to the unit, saving on to the unit. I found that really, really useful. In addition to that, you can also essentially make your own impulse responses with this unit. And it utilizes an EQ match to the um, unaffected amplifier tone. And it basically matches the EQ curve from your mic cabinet and it spits out an IR so you can take your mic'd up tone with you wherever you happen to go. Okay, so I thought I would give you guys a glimpse at the React IR uh, remote software. And this software controls uh, every element of the React IR. And once you have it plugged into your computer, you no longer really have a need to touch or do anything on the face of the React IR. I have it right here. It's right, it's right here. Just barely out of the shot, but I'm going to kind of give you guys an overview on how this thing works. So right now, I have some IRs that are on the unit itself. Now, when an IR is on the unit, it can load and uh, had have active one at a time. Now, if you have IRs and your speaker impulses in a folder somewhere on your computer, like I do right here, this is my ML Sound Lab Zilla Cab pack, for example. So right now I have no IR loaded and my guitar sound is the direct amp sound. 
doesn't sound good. I have up to eight channels that I can load various impulse responses on. Now, I can do this several different ways. I can drag them on, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to use, the. it's telling me I need to use the folder. I'm gonna use the folder and I'm going to already be in my, my Zilla cab pack for uh, the ML Sound Lab impulse response pack. So I'm just gonna hit V30 SM7B and I'm gonna load that up in channel number one. Now you'll notice that up here, uh, it's opened up that folder. So now that I have that one IR loaded, I should have an actual guitar tone. And I do, and it sounds pretty good. I still have seven more channels to, uh, to load stuff onto. So I'm gonna click on over to channel two and gonna go to the folder. I'm gonna go, I don't know. Let's try the V30 with the 160 on it. Okay, I'm gonna repeat this process. Now I think, maybe I want, that's a little warm for me. So I'm going to 58, I'm gonna double click to load it. I got the top end I want, but I don't know, maybe I'm gonna add another IR. Now I know with the ML Sound Lab pack in particular, all these are phase aligned. So I can load multiple instances of them and I won't have any out of phasiness sound. I'm gonna load another one. Um, I don't know, how about a 906? Now I'm gonna blend these a little bit. I'm gonna use these faders and I'm gonna blend them. pretty good to me. Um, let's see. I'm going to click on over to the uh, effects channel and this is kind of a global effects panel. Now we have a noise gate, we have a tone stack in case we're running a preamp, uh, a PA curve to be you know friendly for a PA if we're going to amplify it really really loud, a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and a five band graphic EQ. So we can further tweak this sound which I'm going to do right now. I'm gonna take out some of the low mids. I want to use uh, the high pass filter to kind of take off some of those low lows. Right now it's at 80 hertz. That's pretty good. That's where I would want it to be. That's pretty good. Now, all of these IRs are currently on my computer and I want to put them on the device. So up here in this uh, burn to device button, what it will do it is it will render out a single IR file with all of these settings and including the sliders and the three um, loaded IRs and it will make one rendered IR out of all of these settings and then put it on to the unit. How cool is that? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna burn to device. You can see it's working right here, this little uh, progress menu. 
It is now loading it. And now I have, I believe it was slot five. And there's the IR, it's loaded onto the unit and now I can take it with me wherever I wanna go. Now notice I can also add uh, some reverb impulses on the reverb channel as well. I'm not doing that this time. However, I did think that was a pretty cool feature. Now, this tone matcher button up here, this is kind of, so you can create a tone match of a cabinet. It's not really an, I mean, you are creating an impulse response, but it doesn't generate a tone or it doesn't sweep. It basically takes the direct signal of the amplifier and then it will EQ match it and spit out an IR. And it, uh, I've seen some other videos on it. It's very, very accurate. I have not done or utilized this feature. Uh, maybe that's a separate video or tutorial or something like that once I figure that out. But I thought I would show you the React IR remote interface and all of the cool things you can do with it. This is kind of just skimming the surface. Um, you can also take a snapshot and save the settings uh, into a folder. So if you had a particular set of settings you wanted to save for any reason, if you're, you're letting someone borrow it or you were borrowing it from someone else or something like that, there's also that utility as well, as well as lots and lots of various functions and uses, etc., etc. Pretty cool. So my overall final thoughts, if I may, of the React IR is this is a really, really cool unit. It sounds really good. It feels really good and I love the ability as an audio engineer who's always mixing stuff to be able to have a mixer window that I can kind of trim and utilize all sorts of impulses to create a sonic soup of my favorite guitar tone with which whatever I'm using on any particular amp that I have. I found that very satisfying. It wasn't just a load and then you're stuck with that or you load one or two and then you're just kind of stuck with that tone. I really felt like the amount of options in the React IR are definitely worth the $600 price tag. I will note that the desktop software is not as pretty and is not as graphically amazing. However, the functionality that you would expect to have is all there. So there is a slight learning curve with the software. I didn't find that to be a big de deal and it shouldn't really be uh, a detriment to choosing if you want a digital impulse loader and attenuator for your setup. All the pickable links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Wow, another video gone by. Hope it was pretty good. I mean, it's probably pretty good, but if it wasn't, <laughs> awkward, right?